Welcome to Electron Online, and here's an interesting application of the concept of torque in physics to something very practical in everyday life. Let's say that you hang or that you attach a bracket to the wall. You want to be able to hang something from it or put something on top of that. Let's say you want to put a flower pot on top of that, and you want and you're wondering if the screw by which you hold the bracket to the wall with is strong enough to hold everything in place. The weight on top of the bracket at the end here, let's say that's equal to 200 newtons, and the screw is attached at a distance of 4 meters below where the bracket at the top of the bracket is, and the bottom of the bracket here is 18 centimeters below this point right there. How do we figure that out? How do we figure out the force on the screw by putting a weight on here? The concept is this. Let's say that the screw was unscrewed just a little bit so that the bracket could move just a little bit. Notice that by pulling out or by pushing on the end of the bracket here that would cause the bracket to move in this direction and it would pivot about this point right here. We then realize that this here is our pivot point. Let's call that pivot point A. Now let's screw the screw completely back in and then we realize this is going to be our pivot point. Now notice that if we only attach it to a thin layer of drywall, there's not a lot of force there to hold things in. You probably want to have some wood behind it to be able to really screw the screw in tight into something very sturdy. But the concept is the same. We can say that the sum of all the torques about point A must equal zero. And now we have to recognize that there are two torques, one caused by the weight at the end of the bracket and one caused by the force of the screw holding the bracket against the wall. Zero is equal to the 200 newton force. That would be 200 newtons. And is that a positive or negative torque? Well, notice that this would cause a clock or counterclockwise torque, a counterclockwise torque is a positive torque, that means we have 200 newtons times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, which is this distance right here, let's call that distance 1, minus the force from the screw, the force on the screw, that's what we're looking for, times the perpendicular distance, and again, why did I say minus? That's because this would cause a, ooh, for a moment there, I'm looking at that and I'm looking at the wrong pivot point, so I'm saying something is wrong here, but no, we're correct here. What we can see here is, based on the pivot point being here, the force of the screw will cause a clockwise torque. A clockwise torque is indeed a negative value, so it's negative times the force times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point. Let's call that distance 2 right here, so times distance 2, and that has has to add up to zero. Now we're ready to solve for the force. We can say that the force times distance 2 equals 2,000 newtons, oh, not 2,000, make it 200 newtons, that would be quite a flower pot, times distance 1. Let's plug in some values for distance 1 and distance 2. Distance 2 is, that would be 18 centimeters minus 4 centimeters, that's 14 centimeters, F times 14 centimeters is equal to 200 newtons, times distance 1, and distance 1 would be 5 centimeters. F then becomes 200 newtons times 5 centimeters and divide by 14 centimeters. You may wonder why is he mixing centimeters with newtons, but we don't have to worry here because the centimeters cancel out. As long as you stay consistent with the problem, that is quite all right. And now we're ready to calculate the force on the screw, 200 newtons, times 5 divided by 14, and that's equal to 71.4 newtons, which is not a lot of force, 71.4 newtons, and that shows that brackets do not put a lot of strain or stress on the screw. One of the reasons why they make this end of the bracket so long is to increase that length here, so we have a bigger moment arm about which the force acts, so we have a better torque distance here. Another way of looking at this is if you look at the vertical forces, all the weight here does translate to vertical force on the screw here and will cause some shearing motion there, or I shouldn't say shearing motion, but a shearing force. And of course you want the screw to be big enough to prevent from being sheared off by the weight of the object. If you put a lot of weight here and a very tiny little screw, even though it may be able to handle uh, being uh, having the, the bracket being connected to the wall, you still want to make sure you have a big enough screw so it doesn't get sheared off when you put too much weight on top of the bracket. So that was another thing I was just thinking about. That's how we handle brackets like that and the concept of torque.